I am Anil Kumar and in this series we are going to discuss about circle theorem. Let me begin with defining few basic terms which will be used many times. So here is a circle it is normally defined by the center. Let us name the center point as C. So we will refer this circle as circle C right. So this means this means circle C. So this is equal to saying circle with center C, right? So that is how we normally name a circle. And as you know, circle is defined by its center and the radius, right? So let's say that is the line which connects center with a point on its circumference. Let's call this R and let's call the point on the circumference as any point P, right? In that case, CP will be referred to as radius. So circle is set of points which are same distance away from the center, right? That's how we define circle is, which is set of points equidistant from center. So the distance of every point is R, the radius. Perfect. Any radius, if we extend to the other side, it will again intersect on the circle. And let's say this point is Q. Then the point PQ The length PQ shown here is called the diameter. As you can see, if I say diameter is D, then it is twice radius. So, so we can say diameter is two times radius, right? If I say radius is R and diameter is D, then diameter is twice radius, correct? Now, if we have any other two points connected, let's say, let me connect uh, these two points, for example. Any two points on the circumference can be connected by a straight line, right? So, this straight line is called the chord. This straight line is called the chord. As we'll appreciate, diameter is the longest chord. Remember that diameter is also a chord and it's the longest chord. If I join the center with the end points of the chord. Then what we get here is called a sector. So let me shade this a bit. So this thing what we have here is called sector. And the portion of the circumference, let's highlight with this. The portion of the circumference defined by the end points of the chord is called an arc. So this portion is called arc. Now as you can see, we have two arcs here. The smaller one is called minor arc. And we'll label this as arc with these two endpoints. Let's say these endpoints are M and N. In that case, the minor arc will be referred to as MN. The other arc, which is the bigger one, will be called major arc. You can see major arc. 
which we referred with three points m n and some other points we can say m n p or we could say m p n that is better actually i should say i'm sorry i should say m p n right so the major arc will be m p n like this let me highlight it so that becomes the major arc from m p to n do you see that that becomes the major arc so the angle subtended by the major arc will be reflex angle the m angle subtended by the minor arc will be less than 180 degrees is it okay so these are few terms which we'll be always referring to now in this case this shaded portion let me take another ink this shaded portion is called segment let me write down here is called segment now these are major terms which we are going to use within a circle now every circle could have a tangent right so let me draw one here let's say a line which touches the circle at just one point so let's say we draw a line like this now this line which touches the circle at just one point will be referred to as tangent tangent will always make 90 degrees angle so if i ex join the point of tangency with the center in that case you will see that the tangent always makes 90 degrees angle with the radius that's very important to understand right so tangent always makes 90 degrees angle with the radius we refer to the angles as there could be different ways we could refer to angles by points on the circle for example if i sketch let's say if i join these two points then let me call this point as x then angle m x n this is n right so we say the arc m n arc or i could have written arc m n sub tends angle mxn and this angle let's say this angle is is let's say y then the angle in the center will be twice this angle 2y so this angle which i'm talking about the angle at the center will be referred to as central angle so we have two types of angles defined here the angle here will be referred to as inscribed angle so let me write down this name as as inscribed angle and this one as central angle okay so so the central angle for us is this one which is twice the inscribed angle which is this one is it okay so when we talk about circle theorem inscribed angle which we can also say angle formed by a point on the circumference right we can refer to that as that angle formed by a point on the circumference or we'll refer to it as inscribed angle and that's the central angle right 
So these are few terms which we are going to use many times while talking about circle theorem and related problems. In circle or application of circle theorem mainly is to find out angles within the circle or by a system in which circle and tangents are involved. Is it okay? So we are going to use all these terms to work with many examples. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope these terms are familiar to you. If not, take time to understand them and then move on with the examples. I hope that helps. Thank you and all the best.